Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan from Boards and Beyond coming to you again from my office with another step one question review. Today's question is a hematology question and like all the questions I review in these videos, this was sent to me by a student, so let's jump right into it. So the question says a 25 year old man presents for follow up after abnormal lab work. Six weeks ago, blood testing identified a hemoglobin of 12.3 consistent with mild anemia. The patient feels well with no fatigue or dyspnea. He is an avid marathon runner. New lab results show the following. So we've got a hemoglobin of 12.2, RBCs of 5.8 million, MCV of 74, white blood cells of 6,500, platelets of 210,000, hemoglobin A2 of 6%, normal being 1 to 3%, and then a blood smear showing anemia with target cells. And the question asks, which of the following is the most likely initial pathologic defect leading to this man's condition? Cell membrane instability, complete gene deletion, oxidative stress, erroneous mRNA processing, or impaired heme synthesis, or insoluble protein formation. All right, so the first thing you should recognize after reading this question is that it's a hematology question looking for the cause of this man's mild anemia. And then they give you some lab results here, so let's look at those. So his MCV is 74, which is low, so he has a microcytic anemia. And then they tell you that his hemoglobin A2 is 6%, which is above normal. And right away, when you see this finding, you should recognize that this is a case of beta thalassemia. So in beta thalassemia, patients underproduce beta globin chains, but they can produce alpha and delta chains normally. And hemoglobin A2 is made up entirely of alpha and delta chains, so the amount of A2 goes up in beta thalassemia. And this is an important fact that you need to know. You're definitely going to have to know this for your step one exam. They also tell you that his blood smear shows target cells. Target cells are another classic finding of beta thalassemia. So no matter how you perform in this question, make sure you can recognize that this is a classic description of a patient with beta thalassemia. It's obviously a minor form. He's an avid marathon runner and he's not sick. So he can't have one of the severe transfusion dependent forms of beta thalassemia. He must have a minor form of the disorder. So now let's look at the question. It asks which of the following is the most likely initial pathologic defect leading to this man's condition. Well, right away when I read this, what leaps off the screen at me is the phrase initial pathologic defect. That's a very strange term. I've written a lot of questions for a lot of student exams, and I usually ask something straightforward, like which of the following is the cause of this man's condition, or which of the following is the best explanation for this man's condition. The fact that this question writer chose to ask for the most likely initial pathologic defect makes me think that many of these answer choices are going to be actual pathologic defects present in beta thalassemia, but they only want the one that is the initial one. So keep that in mind as we go through the answer choices. So answer choice A says cell membrane instability, and you should know that cell membrane instability leading to anemia is a classic pathologic description of hereditary spherocytosis, which this man does not have. However, when patients have beta thalassemia, they don't produce properly matched amounts of alpha and beta globin chains. That can lead to clumps of globin molecules that precipitate out inside the red cell, and this causes a number of problems, including the anemia. Well, one of the problems that those mismatched globin chains can cause is cell membrane instability. So answer choice A is something that is occurring in beta thalassemia. But remember, they want the initial pathologic defect, which probably has something to do with the genetic code. So before we jump on answer choice A, let's read the rest of the options. Answer choice B says complete gene deletion. That is not correct. So in alpha thalassemia, usually the cause is a gene deletion, but in beta thalassemia, the cause is usually a gene mutation. So this question writer put answer choice B in, hoping that you'd confuse alpha and beta thalassemia. Answer choice C says oxidative stress, which is a classic cause of anemia in patients with G6PD deficiency. However, it also occurs in patients with thalassemia, so it could be the right answer. But once again, I'm gonna hold off on picking this as the correct answer because they're looking for the most likely initial pathologic defect. Let's skip choice D for now and go to choice E, which is impaired heme synthesis. This is not correct. But I will tell you, if this was an answer choice on an actual board question, at least 20% of students would pick it. That's because they would confuse the word heme with the word hemoglobin. There is impaired hemoglobin synthesis in thalassemia, but not impaired heme synthesis. The problem in the thalassemias is producing globin chains. Heme production is normal. Remember that hemoglobin is made up of two components, globin chains and heme molecules. In thalassemias, the globin chains are the problem, but heme synthesis is normal. 
In other disorders called porphyrias, that's where heme synthesis is abnormal. So answer choice E is not correct, but it's a super tricky answer and a reminder to carefully read answer choices so you don't jump on something that is misleading and incorrect. Then answer choice F says insoluble protein formation. Well, this definitely happens in thalassemias. As I said, you have mismatched globin chains that become insoluble inside the red blood cells. But once again, I'm not going to pick that because I'm going to wait to see if I can find a better answer for the initial pathologic defect. And so now if we look at answer choice D, it says erroneous mRNA processing. And it turns out that this is the correct answer. Many of the mutations in beta thalassemia lead to erroneous mRNA processing. So answer choice A, C, and F are all incorrect because even though those things are happening in thalassemia, they are not the initial pathologic defect. Now, having said all that, I should let you know that this is an extremely tricky question. I really don't think you're going to see anything like this on your step exam. Most questions are not out to dupe you like this, where multiple answer choices are occurring in the patient, but they only want the initial pathologic defect. But nevertheless, for this question, the correct answer is D, erroneous mRNA processing. Now, I've cleared away my ink so I can make a couple of points about the correct answer, answer choice D. Now, although erroneous mRNA processing is present in many patients with beta thalassemia, this is really a minor factoid. It's not very clinically relevant. It's really a super detailed piece of information about beta thalassemia. A lot of medical students will not know this. And what I say to that is that's fine. At most, you might see one question on your entire step one exam about mRNA processing in thalassemia. But you could see five or six questions on thalassemia and anemias in general. So the far more important takeaway from this question is to recognize that it describes beta thalassemia and understand what the pathology of beta thalassemia is. A far less important thing to know is that there happens to be erroneous mRNA processing in beta thalassemia. That's a niche detail. It's not super, super important. So here I'll just show you that the information in this question is found in first aid. Here's a section from biochemistry talking about splice site mutations. Those types of mutations lead to retained introns in mRNA, and this creates a protein with impaired or altered function. And as it says here, that can occur in beta thalassemia, and that was the answer to the question. But remember what I said, this is a super fine point about beta thalassemia. I don't think it's very high yield. And then here's the section in first aid on beta thalassemia. It tells you that in beta thalassemia minor, which is what our patient in the question had, there's a mild microcytic anemia, so a mild anemia with a low MCV, and an increase in the amount of hemoglobin A2, which is what the question described. So what are the takeaways from this question? Well, the first one is read the questions carefully. Don't fall for traps like picking the answer of impaired heme synthesis when in fact the problem is impaired globin chain synthesis. That confuses a lot of students and catches them off guard even though they may know a particular topic. The second takeaway is that it's important to recognize cases of beta thalassemia. You should nail that before your step one exam. If they describe a patient with alpha or beta thalassemia, including the lab findings, you should be able to identify the diagnosis right away. And then the third point is for these super fine details about these disorders, like the fact that beta thalassemia is associated with erroneous mRNA protein processing, I wouldn't worry too much about that stuff. Back when step one was scored, that may have made a difference because it could boost your score a few points. But now that step one is pass fail, you want to focus on big picture, high yield facts. And knowing general principles of anemia and thalassemias is far more important than knowing about mRNA processing in certain forms of beta thalassemia. And that concludes our module on a step one question review.